Oh, boy, 11 o'clock in the morning, and we got home at dawn, and I promised Ellen I'd come to bed in 10 minutes. Well, that's the way it is with cartoonists. You have to sit down and go to work when the inspiration hits you, and it hit me last night. The war between men and women. I got the idea after a cocktail party at our house. John? John, you said you were coming to bed right away. I just don't understand you. No, indeed. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. You see, it was Ruth and Phil Jensen's 16th wedding anniversary. He's a writer. Do you mean to tell me you've been working all this time? Yes, dear. Anyway, Ruth has this awful habit of continually interrupting. You've got to be exhausted. What it is, Phil can't tell a story without Ruth breaking in with something totally irrelevant. John, the least you can do is lie down and take a nap before you go into the office this morning. Yes, right. I'll do it right away. Well. No, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, let me finish. He had this drink in his hand, and uh, I'll see you in a minute. As I was trying to tell you, before I was so rudely looked after by my wife, I got the idea at this little cocktail party. Now, Phil Jensen made the mistake of trying to tell a funny story in front of his wife. There we were, drifting on the lake, in this little 12-foot skiff, Ruth and I. Didn't the man we rented it from say it was 15 feet? It was 12. I thought he said 15. <laughs> well, really, whatever. Well, there we are in the middle of nowhere, and we're out of gasoline. Hmm. The engine was flooded, remember, darling? We had plenty of gas. Sweetheart, darling, really doesn't matter. You tell it different every time. Come on, Ruth, it's his story. Oh, shush, Ruth was there, too. Now, when did I say anything to you? That's J.J. Howard and his wife, Sylvia. He's a dramatic critic and a cartoonist on the Manhattanite. Excuse me, I didn't mean to interrupt. Anyway. Ruth reaches down, and she grabs this paddle that's lying there on the floor. Actually, it was an oar. <laughs> Ruth, so help me. If you don't shut up. Sorry. As she goes again, ruining Jensen's stories. You mean there he goes again, oh, being so positive he's right? <laughs> Come on, Phil. I certainly know the difference between a paddle and an oar. How about a refill, hmm? You know, they say martinis are just great for that old memory. And or One has a... more word out of you and I'll kill you. <laughs> Philip, come on now. You adore Ruth and you know it. What are you, some kind of troublemaker, hmm? <laughs> well, anyway, I'm standing up in the boat holding the paddle and I hand it to Ruth. Oh! <laughs> the overt act. Now, it may appear to you that Jensen spilled this drink on his wife accidentally. However... It was the trigger to a full-scale holocaust. Mankind against womanhood. Open hostilities were about to break out on the entire eastern Connecticut front the very next morning when Ellen and I bumped into the Jensen's at the local grocery store. Hi, Ellen. John. Hi, Ruth. We certainly had a lovely time at your party, didn't we, darling? I'll take your word for it. Hey, here we go. <laughs> Just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> what did he expect after 12 martinis? Nine. Twelve. I was counting. No, you weren't. You were interrupting. I was correcting. Is that such a crime? Well, actually, when someone is trying to build a story to a humorous conclusion, now, it's... Now, uh, John, it's... be fair. There have been many times when you've interrupted me when I'm trying to tell a story. I don't interrupt. I try to help. There, you see. John agrees with me. Well, why don't you help him and get off my back? Did it seem as if I were agreeing with Ruth? Yes, indeedy. You are so pig-headed. Oink! Oink! 
Did you see what he did? He actually threw something at her. Now, dear, I don't think it's any of your business. Whose side are you on, anyway? Well, she called him a pig, you didn't she? You are a big mouth. And you are a child, a pig-headed adolescent. Mike! Mike! The fight in the grocery, the first major confrontation. And now there was no turning back. Spleens had been vented with heavy loss of composure on both sides. Both sides met to review the situation. The men took over Cochran's bar and immediately converted it to general headquarters. I'll tell you what really hurts. The sudden realization that I've been married to an insensitive woman for 16 years. I guess a guy can get so close to the bush that he never sees the thorns. Mm. That's very aptly put. Oh, Mally, may I host another round? Whatever you want. Well, what's new? Huh? Phil's homeless. Yeah, Ruth locked him out. Why, that's ridiculous. What for? I don't know. She hung up on me before I could demand an explanation. I never heard of anything like that. Why, why don't you just kick the door in? That's what I do. I publish a man's magazine. Well, Mally, whatever you need. And all because of one crummy little fishing story. I don't even like to fish. And the ridiculous thing about that is that we've all heard this story before anyway. Oh, Molly, you're a wonderful human being. You're kind and you're sensitive. I only hope my children have the opportunity to grow up in a bar like this. Whatever you like. <laughs> Frankly, I think you're making a big deal out of nothing. So you don't spend one night at home, so what? That's right. Why don't you go to a hotel, enjoy yourself? That's what I do. Better than sitting around brooding about it. I like sitting around brooding. It helps keep my spirits down. <laughs> I don't think you ought to be alone. Maybe you should spend the night with a friend. It would be a nice change anyway. Good idea. But don't look at me. Sylvia says you're no longer welcome at our house. John? Well, you know that Ellen always thought a great deal more of Ruth than she ever did of you. Perfectly understandable. You know what I do? Yes, you said you'd kick your door down and then you'd go to a hotel and enjoy yourself. Because you publish a man's magazine. Right. And something else. I'll tell you, I wouldn't stand for anyone locking me out of my own house, and it embarrasses me to see it happen to an employee. Perfectly understandable. Actually, it isn't going to do any one of us any good at all to allow Ruth to act like this. You make an interesting point. Why don't we take him home, get him into his pajamas, stick him in his own bed, whether Ruth likes it or not? I appreciate the thought. I'm doing it as much for the magazines as I am for you. I don't think Hamilton has a bad idea there, crude though it may appear. Thank you. What we need here is a united front. One for all and all for one. Good, I like that. I've never been part of an unruly mob before. Seems to me that our course is perfectly clear. On your feet, Phil. Oh, no, look, really, fellas, I can't put you through all this. It's too late to back down now. This is bigger than the four of us. If we don't hang together, we'll all hang separately. What do you say, Phil? Ruth will never know what hit her. Well, OK. But not unless we have a few more drinks first. You're not scared, are you? No. Not now. I just don't want Ruth to get the mistaken idea that she's driven me away from drink. <laughs> O'Malley? Whatever you ask. Another round. Doubles. And separate checks. <laughs> Of course, we men had no reason to let overconfidence get the best of us, because at that very moment, the enemy was planning a strategy of their own. Mr. Jensen's gone for the day? I see. No, no message. Thank you very much. Gone. And heaven only knows where. I hate myself. I hate myself. Ruth. Maybe he's at the barber's. Oh, it's not Tuesday. Oh. Ruth, he's probably on his way home. I I'm sure he feels just as badly about the whole affair as you do. Why did I tell him not to come home? Why? I didn't really mean it. Of course you didn't. He knows it. Oh, if I just knew where he was. Oh, Lord. Philip! 
Now I hope you have a good explanation for keeping me waiting at the courts for a half hour. Sylvia, sit down and have some coffee. I don't think there's going to be any tennis today. Ruth? Oh, what's wrong? It's Philip. I don't know where he is. Well, what difference does it make? Ruth told him not to come home tonight after what happened at the grocery store. Oh. Now I can't even tell him I'm sorry. But I need him. But I want him. Well, isn't that rotten? The least he could do is call back to see if you were ready to apologize. That's true, isn't it? After all, it wasn't all your fault. No, it wasn't, was it? I wouldn't care if J.J. ever came home. Not until he apologized. And I could have killed John the way he egged Philip on in that store. So don't blame yourself so much. I feel so foolish. How could I have been so understanding? Well, you've always been a good person. <laughs> well, I tell you one thing. If Philip thinks he's going to set one foot in this house tonight, he's got another thing coming. That's a girl. As you can see, I am merely reporting the action honestly, straightforward and true to the tradition of any accredited war correspondent. Both sides, committed to a carefully conceived battle plan, were on the march. Zero hour was fast approaching. I got the tab at the Coochie Coochie Club. I got it. And stay a bachelor, huh, Fred? We voted and it was unanimous. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. Good yeah. Good yeah. Good yeah. Good buddy boy. Yeah. All right, come on, come on. I'm all steamed up. Let's do something really reprehensible. What time is it? It's very, very late. You're crazy. Look at that. The sun's just coming up. It's very, very early. You're looking at a street light, you dummy. You never see a lot of flies around the sun. Shh, keep it down, you wake roof. Okay, but just remember, we act like nothing happened. You had a night out with the boys, and that's all there is to it. Night out with the boys, that's all there is to it. Okay, ready? Ready, ready. Let's do something before the hatred wears off. It's them all right. No wonder J.J. wasn't on the 502. We should have known they'd all band together. It's a coward. He can't even fight his own battles, let alone stand up straight. All right, we'll take off our shoes, and we'll sneak them upstairs. Okay, but well, let's break a window first, huh? Oh, no! You'd wake up Ruth. She's a very light sleeper. Just rip off the covers and crawl right in. What kind of a chicken magazine do you think I'm running? What about the couch in the living room? The couch, just like nothing ever happened. There. Then that's it. It's time. What are they doing now? You're not going to believe this. They're holding hands. That's more than they ever do with us. <laughs> Shh, they're coming now. All right, go. Onward, men. But don't wake Ruth. Right. Zero hour, Connecticut. Spirits were running high. We men had planned our final assault to perfection. It seemed nothing could go wrong. That is, until the unexpected happened, throwing us completely off balance. <laughs> Drunken dummies, don't you know what time it is? Loud mouths, keep me awake, will you? Cut it out. My wife's a light sleeper. Don't curse at me. I'll have the cops on you rotten bums. I'll thank you to watch your language. Hippies! How do you like that, huh? The sniper had accomplished her mission. All that noise and confusion had prevented our overwhelming surprise. Before we could regroup, there was Ruth standing on the front porch demanding an explanation. Magnanimously, we agreed to a parley. How many times do you want me to say it? I'm sorry. But how could you not have called me? Don't you know how worried we were? How could you men not have called any of us? We didn't think it was fair to have one worry less than the other two. Anyway, you must admit that Ruth told Phil he wasn't welcome in his own home. And I suppose I was not altogether justified. Oh, sweetness, you kept interrupting my stories. I suppose throwing bottles and cans at me is permissible. What was that? 
cops. Impossible. That's my car. There you are. Hello, Dumpling. Don't you Dumpling me. How dare you scare me half to death like this. I'm sorry, dear, but you really didn't have to worry. Can you imagine all the way from the city and why? Because my husband doesn't have one shred of consideration. It's just a good thing I thought about calling that awful uh, uh, Crocker's place. Cochran's. It's a very nice place. I'm getting better all the time. Oh, and just what do you mean by that? I mean, we're wasting our time trying to think that they would understand masculine camaraderie. I should say you are. I should say you are. Come on, girls, let's go. They're drunk as skunks. Oink! <laughs> Oink! I'll never understand how a sensible man like you could have become involved in this. A man does what he must. <laughs> How do you like that for nerve? Slamming my door in our face. I don't know about you, but I'm going inside and get Margaret, even if I have to drag her out by her bangs. And I advise you all to do the same. I think it would be a mistake to let them get the upper hand. We'll never hear the end of it. Right. I'm tired of being Mr. Nice Guy year after year. All right, let's go. Each man for himself, and God bless us all. Charge! <laughs> All right. Where is she? Who? My wife. That's whom? It's who. That's who. Whom is only used with transitive verbs. Oh, shut up and fight your own battles. What's going on in here? Oh, nothing at all, my dear. Only it's all over and we're going home. Oh, no, we're not. Oh, yes, we are. Get in the car. Get your hands off me. Just who do you think you are? Your husband. Only because it's too early in the morning to call a good lawyer. Get your tennis racket, dear. I'm taking you home. Says who? Says me. I'm not budging. And I'm not kidding. You struck me. That's 15, love. You care to go for a whole set? Ah, uh, there you are. And here I stay. OK, have it your way. John, where are you going? Home, to have all the locks changed. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Don't I dare what? Don't you dare dare me when I'm daring you. John, I've never seen you like this. Well, it's not the liquor talking. I happen to have backbone that won't quit. Ouch, John, that's my ring finger. I said downstairs, and you're coming with me whether you like it or not. Philip, are you mad? We live here. That's beside the point. <laughs> All right. What if we don't go home with you? Well, what if they don't go home with us? Well, uh, you just better. Right, John? Right. And just what makes you think you can make us? <clears throat> if you'll excuse us a moment, ladies. Men. Do you think they mean business? I don't know. Now, girls, we have got to stand firm. Okay. This is how it is. You are cut off. From what? From each and every charge account now open in your name. What? You wouldn't dare. Oh, wouldn't we? Philip, keep out of my skirt. Macy's, Bloomingdale's. He's doing it. No, no, not Bloomingdale. <laughs> Philip, please. Margaret, do something. This is ridiculous. Well, I don't know what we can do. They've got us, and they know it. That's right, girls. Make up your minds. It's either sink or spend. That did it. The threat of economic sanctions. 
weakened the female will to such a degree that the final all-out assault turned into a complete rout. However, war does not end with the final battle, but rather with the final surrender. Say it again. I love you. That takes care of Macy's. And I promise I'll never interrupt one of your stories again. And Bloomingdale's. <laughs> Would you like to try for uh, Sex Fifth Avenue and Bergdorf Goodman? <laughs> oh. Oh, I should never have drunk so much. Well, boys will be boys. Only because girls will be girls. You understand that, don't you? Yes, dear. A little lower. To the right. I told you I'm starved. All right, all right. Sausage and bacon. With hash browns. Yes, dear. With hash browns. Well browned, not white as a sheet like you usually serve them. I promise. With a doily. I never did like eating off for my cut. <laughs> I trust I've gotten through to you. Yes, darling. You had every right to get tipsy and to stay out all hours. You're darn right. And I'm not going to say another word about it. It's forgotten. Well, thank you. I'm glad you see it that way, because I do love you. You know. And I love you. Thank you. All right. Onward and outward. I never thought we'd make it. <laughs> John, leave that till later. Let's go to bed. Uh, in a few minutes. I just have to jot down a couple of things. John, it's 6.30 in the morning. We'll be lucky if we get two hours sleep. Uh, ten minutes. Just give me ten minutes. Anyway, that's the war between men and women as I see it. I hope you liked it. Excuse me for interrupting, but I felt you should have breakfast. Oh, thank you, dear. And listen, I'm sorry about not getting to bed. Oh, that's perfectly all right. After all, what could one expect after your behavior last night? Well, I thought that was forgotten. I thought the whole affair was forgotten. It is, completely. Uh, well, I guess that's the way it is. Thank you. 